Hi, uh, Mr. Bennett here. Today we're going to be looking at the some questions to do with the photoelectric effect. So the first one here, explain what's meant by the photon model for electromagnetic radiation. So what you would do to answer this question would be to say something like, Einstein proposed that light is emitted in the form of discrete bundles of energy with wave characteristics. All right? With the energy of the bundles is related to the wave properties, okay, and we'd state that via the formula E equals HF. Right? So obviously it doesn't need to be word perfect, but it needs to have something in the form of um, the idea that we have a photon of light, which is a bundle of energy, uh, and it basically has the energy related to E equals HF, so F mean the frequency of the radiation. All right, the second question is, a metal can emit electrons when light is incident on the surface. Use the photon model to explain why a threshold frequency exists for the light before electrons are emitted. All right, so I've sort of prepared an answer here for you. So we're talking about the surface or the metal itself has, um, has bound or has electrons bound to the metal surface. All right, so... These electrons are free to move around. So the photon will hit an instant, if it hits instant on a free electron, will absorb all of its energy if it's greater than the binding energy of the electron. Now, uh, the term binding energy is the energy that binds the electron to the nucleus. All right, so um, the most energetic free electrons um, requires the minimal energy to escape and hence the minimum energy photon. All right, since we know the energy is directly proportional to the frequency, then there's a minimal threshold frequency that's required to emit electrons. All right, so, so simply another way of writing that might be to say something like uh, the metal has delocalized electrons or free electrons and the easiest electron to uh, be ejected from the metal would require a certain frequency photon um, so it's a minimal photon energy that you're actually going to have to eject that electron from the surface of the metal all right so um, you probably need to work on how you're going to write that yourself so looking at question two so sunlight ejects electrons from the satellite with a silver coating with it on its outer surface the satellite can become charged by the photoelectric effect Assuming the outer surface is initially uncharged, sunlight is made up of light within the visible spectrum of 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers. Calculate the longest wavelength of light that can be ejected, that can eject a electron from the uh, satellite surface. Um, the work function of silver is 3.83 electron volts. So we start thinking about what we do have in terms of information, all right, so the formulas that we do know are that the energy is equal to HF, which is equal to HC all over the wavelength. So what we're looking at is for the longest wavelengths, aren't we? And we know that the work function, all right, the work function is equal to what? Well, the work function is equal to h times by the threshold frequency, all right? So we already know that. Um, we have to think about if the if the actual wavelength there the um, over there. So is it four hundred nanometers or is it seven hundred and fifty nanometers or is it something between there that we need to look at seven hundred and fifty nanometers? All right. Another way of writing it is four by ten to the minus 7 meters to 7.5 by 10 to the minus 7 meters. All right, so keeping in fact that C is the speed of light, we know the work function over there is 3.83. Um, we need to work out what the longest wavelength is. All right, so does this one over here have a longer wavelength or a shorter wavelength? Well, Obviously, something which has got 750 nanometers has actually got a longer wavelength there. So if we were using the work function, 3.83, that's equal to HC all over 
the wavelength itself. And that's what we're trying to work out. The wavelength is equal to HC all over the energy. All right, that's what we need to work out there. Um, now the thing is, we also need to convert that to joules because that's the SI units for this factor. All right, so we we divide it by 1.69 to get it to electron volts. So what we need to do is we need to times it by 1.6 to get it to joules. So this here will be 6.63 by 10 to the minus 4, 34, which is Planck's constant. 3 by 10 to the 8, which is the speed of light. That's all going to be over 3.83 times by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, which is the charge on an electron. So we go to our calculator and do that. So top line, 6.63 to the power of minus 34. We times that by 3 to the power of 8. Now, because we're dividing by two things in the bottom line, we need to put a bracket. So it's going to be 3.83 times by 1.6 e to the minus 19. Okay, put the bracket around there, so we're dividing by that. And that will give us our particular thing, so that's 3.225, 3.25 by 10 to the minus 7. So that's equal to 3.25 by 10 to the minus 7 uh, meters. Now, if we want to put that into nanometers, that's 325 nanometers is going to be the longest wavelength that we're going to be able to use in order to eject a, a, a photon electron from the surface. All right, next part of that is explain why satellites with platinum coating charges more slowly than one with silver coating. The work function of the platinum is 5.32 electron volts. Well, that's got a greater work function. So if it's got a greater work function, then it's harder for well, it needs a more energetic photon to hit the um, electron to eject it from the surface. All right. So if it's harder to eject the electrons from the surface, then it's going to charge a lot more slowly than the silver surface will. All right. So that's the sort of gist of what you need to talk about there for that question. Over here, the next question is a like practice skills one, which relates to what we're doing here. All right, so we've got a table of values, and what we've got there is we're going to pop this data into a table. So at 2.6 electron volts, it's going to be 11.8. All right, so 2.6 electron volts is 11.8, so that's somewhere about there, putting across. All right, the next value we have is 2.1 minus 10.6. 2.11 is 10.6, so probably around there somewhere. 1.81 uh, is going to be 0.99, so it's nearly 10. So let's say it's probably around there, somewhere like that. Uh, 1.47 is 9.1, so that's probably going to be somewhere around there. 1.1 uh, is going to be 8.2. 8.2, 1.1, so putting it across about there. And then 0.57 is going to be 6.9, so it's roughly about there somewhere. So obviously what you do from that data is get your ruler and you draw a straight line going through there and continue that down. Now I'm not going to do that, of course. Um, so if I was doing this question here, um, it tells me what my frequency here. So this value here is my threshold frequency. That there is my minus my work function. So use your graph to determine each of the following. The work function for sodium expressed in joules. Now this is actually measured in electron volts. So we could say that's equal to something like work function is equal to um, 2.6 electron volts. So then I would just simply go 2.6 uh, times that by... 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 and that will convert that to joules. So let's do that. 2.6 uh, times 1.6 to the power of minus 19. 
Okay, and then we're looking at 4.16 by 10 to the minus 19. So that's equal to 4.16 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that's a really small energy. That's why we use electron volts. It's much easier. The other way of doing that would be to go, the frequency is something like um, the work function is equal to H times by the threshold frequency. And so you go 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34 and then then you would times that by the oh sorry then you times that by the threshold frequency okay so the threshold frequency we see we're saying there is about 5.2 or something like that so if you times that by 5.2 by 10 to the minus 14 or to 10 to the 14 then that would give you a, hopefully an answer that's pretty close to that all right now, to determine what Planck's constant is, then we need to have some values that we're going to use. Now, let's assume that the first value is pretty close to being on the line, and the last value is pretty close to being on the line. So then what we know is the rise over run. So that's going to be the slope of the line. is going to be um, 2.6 take 0.57. And then the, the, when we're looking at our uh, wavelengths, it was 11.8 take 6.9. So that's 11.8 take 6.9. But that's all times by 10 to the 14. Okay, now that will give me, because it's in electron volts, that will give me the H over E. So therefore, to work out what H is, so therefore, H is going to be equal to all of that value there, 6 point, uh, 2.6 take 0 0.57. And we'll have to times that whole thing at the top there by E. And then that's going to be 11.8 uh, take 6.9 times 10 to the 14. Does that make sense? So if I do the calculation there, so it's going to be 2.6 take 0.57 um, and then I'm going to divide that by bracket 11 point oh sorry I can't remember so 11.8 take 6.9 11.8 take 6.9 um, or actually you should do it properly, 11.8 and then that's e to the 14, take 6.9, e to the 14, and that will give me my value there, and then I have to times that by, um, times that by 1.6 to the minus 19. And that's going to give me something like that. If you look at the answer we just got, um, clearly I've made a mistake. And what I've actually forgot to do was put the brackets around uh, the top line. I put the brackets around the bottom line and then I times it by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. And when I do that, I get an answer of 6.63 .6 by 10 to the minus 34. So that works out to be pretty close to what Planck's constant is. So that's great. Part of that is to work out what the stopping potential would be required if the intensity of light of that were doubled. All right, the stopping potential of the intensity of the light, the frequency of that H was doubled, then what would actually happen if the intensity was doubled? It actually wouldn't do anything to it. All it does by doubling the intensity is, is to increase the number of electrons. It doesn't have anything to do with the stopping potential. All right, so um, the intensity only increases the number of of things that you're actually going to do there. All right, so anyway, hopefully this helps you in terms of when you're doing your questions.